while we're um, while you're doing the mic, I think one thing that I'd really love to think about and and would love to hear um, Vince come up and maybe say a little bit about it. I've been trying to read more um, or read again about um, Vince Diaz's discussion of Itak and um, Pukov. Is that how you say it? Um, so in particular, you know, I first was introduced to this idea through his writing with um, Kehaulani Kawanui in Native um, Pacific Cultural Studies on the Edge, but also was recently just reading his article of Voyaging for Anti-Colonial Recovery, where he talks more about these, um, these methods and thinking about ourselves as, um, as being in travel, right? So not just thinking about um, indigeneity in particular in terms of a rooted, rat landed relationship, but also a routed and, and in transit sort of a relationship. And so um, I think that if I, and I haven't thought through in this enough yet because I was just reading, rereading it a couple nights ago, but putting that in relation to this idea of kuleana I think could be really productive to think about. Um, so, and you can explain this far, far better. But the basic idea is that to locate one's positionality on a canoe, it recognizes that the, the islands are also moving, right? That the islands are not just static, but that, and that we are moving, but it's all in, it's all in movement. Um, and that when you're on the ocean, in order to find, figure out your position, you're um, sort of measuring, calculating, those are bad words, because they're sort of quantitative. But you're looking at um, the distance in relation to your your destination and your vision, as well as where you came from, and then a third reference island, and how those are also mapped in relation to the celestial bodies overhead. Um, which seems to me to be such a rich way to think in relation to this idea of, of kuleana and positionality, um, you know, that has to do, when I, when I think, for example, about um, at a collective level for Hawaiians as we kind of envision uh, an independent Hawaii, for example, that we have to think about the history that we've come from, as well as the destination that we want to go to, but also, you know, um, the relations to other places and peoples um, who are in different kinds of relationship to ongoing U.S. empire, right, the, or, or other parts of the now independent Pacific. So sort of on that level, but also really at the ground level of as people come into struggle together, how can we think about, the other thing that I think is so um, awesome is how he talks about how indigeneity is sort of um, about time, space, um, narrative, and that, that the stories are essential, that the words of how our ancestors have recounted these paths and, and the relationships of these um, islands to the you know, creatures that live on them and the celestial bodies overhead the stories about those relationships have to be told and retold over and over. Um, so I don't really have an answer, but I think that's such a brilliant way. I also, I also want to ask, because I've been reading the same article, <laughs> and you have this really interesting, and thinking about your work with the kind of status and non-status forms of organizing and using both at the same time, and you're talking about a form of decolonization that is about, I mean, I, I didn't mention when talking about indigenous us resurgence, but I think you've been doing this work for a long time and thinking through Austronesian sea craft and, and forms of, uh, of wayfinding. So it seems that you're also making an argument about forms of decolonization that are not nation state based. And then mm -hmm. I am like, I, yeah, I've been kicking up with this one. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I, I really appreciate that because uh, I think at one, at one level that. I go, to, I go to the seafaring stuff for bearings. And that bearings, the first thing that, that I've learned very early on was an entirely different um, mode and relationality to the world around you that was not simply alive and well in traditional seafaring, but was actually what, was, what made that seafaring uh, effective and successful. That's a it wasn't so much simply a different radical sense of a different cartography. It wasn't just simply a different, um, you know, the relationship between positionality and directionality, as I tried to suggest yesterday. Um, 
there was a there was a violence if you just reduce that to cardinal directionality. But there's really different things here. So, but just the idea of of um, of relationality and bearings, different kinds of bearings that were indigenous, that were, that that are indigenous, that have not had a chance, uh, yet have tons of stuff to teach. Now, the reason why I think uh, what there were two things, two other things that, that stuck out of me yesterday that I thought was the same things going on. Uh, when Jeff Corntassel uh, reminded us that it, the, this stuff is, as, is, is, is also about how uh, the land and seas identify us, uh, and not just how, how we identify. So there is, there's something very profound and necessary to learn about figuring out how it is that we're interpolated by the world around us. Uh, you, you know, I think our ancestors were actually really adept at understanding how they were interpolated, how they were addressed, how they were affected. So they built civilizations in relations and really different kinds of relations to the world around us. That was one. The other one that just really blew me away yesterday was the idea of, and I, I, can't, I, haven't been, I haven't stopped thinking about this in relation to that kind of pro predicament of the afternoon session where we had uh, um, leaders of the movement uh, poles apart around what to do around sovereignty, right? But it was that idea that, that you, you have this aloha, aloha aina that comes through you and speaks out. Right? That's also another, that's also another, um, that's, that's also another insight into a radically different relationality and a bearing. It's also radically different from state, statist, statecraft, um, it's an entirely different kind of subjectivity. Um, and I, I, I share the excitement around, around the work that, that Noe's book because there, the, the, this, this was about nation building. Sailing is about nation building. Uh, planting is about nation building. Um, food is about nation building. Uh, and and our nations and our governments and our leaders have failed us on that, right? Because they have, they've sort of bought into uh, uh, the wrong kinds of relationalities that have thrown the directionalities and the positionalities off. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you made that connection. Even if, it, the, the connections aren't, they don't necessarily have to be one-to-one -one corresponding. That's maybe one of the shortcomings of comparative analysis. We think that they're just parallel, and that, you know we look for the one-to-one -one connections, and um, and that relationality, how things are related, the different ways that things are related, and the different ways that we're related to the world around us, including how how we have to understand how the world uh, determines also how we're sh we should relate to it. You know, I think that that's the right path, I think, so, you know. <laughs> I thank you all. I really, really like this panel, um, especially because I am considering being a teacher um, as a one of my paths, possible paths. Um, but uh, my question was for Noe. Um, I, I'm really interested in this um, this thing you spoke of, like the movement building for Ea. Um and I was just wondering what what is in it, you know, um, and or like kind of the methods of teaching that. You said like maybe it's a tool for if communities come to um, like academics, and then that can be used. Um, but then also, I have another part of my question. No. <laughs> I think it was like 
Okay. The, the, I'll just give the short answer and then we can talk about it more later. But the basic idea of it was that um, what we saw, and this is kind of like also, you know, bridging, realizing that academics and activism aren't separate, two separate things, but that one of, and um, Taeke Alfred said it so well yesterday that, you know, it's, we use the spaces that we're in to um, engage in contention against systems of power that are continuing to destroy our people and lands and waters. So, um, so the, the project is actually a project of an organization called Mana Movement um, for Aloha no Ka'aina. And what it comes out of is the idea that there are, there are genealogies of struggle here in Hawaii that younger generations have been cut off from because our educational system does not teach us of the history of people's struggle in, the, in this place. Um, and so the basic intention of the curriculum is to connect whomever, young people, you know, we're, we're in conversation right now with Kupuna in Waianae who may want to do um, so at any, at any age, but just want to connect with these stories and learn what, we, what those histories, genealogies have to teach us about how to engage in um, Aloha Aina and struggle based on Ea here. Because what we saw was that coming from an activist point of view is that there's a lot of activists and organizers trainings out there, um, School of Uni Unity and Liberation, Ruckus Society, um, Center for Third World Organizing. There's all these different kinds of trainings, but they all come from outside of Hawaii. And what we wanted to recognize was um, that there is a genealogy of struggle right here that we can draw on what have, how have people engaged in struggle from this place and how can we learn from and honor that. Um, so it includes, it includes stories of struggle that are very specifically um, Kanaka OEV, um, <clears throat> but it also includes stories like Waihole Waikane that were very much a multi-ethnic um, coalitional struggle where people were, tr were trying to work those things out. You know? And we can talk more about what's actually in it. I uh, just wanted to have some short comments. I know that we're running over time with this panel and I'm gonna have to organize the other eight for uh, the next panel, but uh, just a mahalo uh, all of you for, for sharing uh, what you have today. Um, I've been a big fan of, of all of your work, um, and, and I just wanted to also try to think across them in, in ways that maybe aren't so obvious, and, and I know Tai, you yourself are saying, you know, I'm an artist, I, I don't really feel like maybe this is my conversation, but at the same time, I think it's so important because most of the students that we train aren't going to end up in academia. Most of the people we need to reach are going to be looking at the mainstream media that you are yourself now a part of. And, you know, as, as you and I have discussed before, there's, there, there's always a struggle in, in getting a story that's true and, and, and still being able to be circulated in that broad uh, range. But one of the specific things coming back to our conference with, with thinking about Oceania and, and maybe even more specifically with voyaging. I mean, there's, there's also ways in which the, the, the work that you've done on, on Pinky Thompson and, and now uh, next week with the song contest with the, the voyaging theme for Kamehameha where there's another way of getting at some of these points that we're very high theory on, um, but trying to send that out to a broader audience, and, and I wonder if you might just say a couple words on, on what you need to do to translate some of these things, such as voyaging, and, and make those connections to the stories um, that are gonna be maybe coming forward. Um, yeah, so I, actually, I do have a piece that would fit perfectly for that, but it might run long. I mean, well, so this past, um, I believe it was November, uh, we, uh, Hukuleo and Hikianali uh, returned back to Waitangi, which is his 40th anniversary. Um, so one of our clients, I work for Kamehameha Schools as well, um, we sent a contingency out there to greet the canoes. Um, and there was this huge idea of what, what you know, and, and for the question for the students were, is this like, how are we related in, our, in regards to our Polynesian cousins, you know? Um, when the first, when the, when, when Hoku landed in Waitangi in 
1985, I could be wrong. Um, yes, 1985. Um, that was, James Hinari said that this is, you guys, are, Hawaiians are considered the sixth tribe of Taitokirao because in their legends and in their stories, the next time a voyaging canoe would come would be our ancestors. So, and for like the Kumemere students, everyone, like, everyone in that group, they were like, well, so what does that mean in regards to our identity, you know? And, like, and it was this thing that we're, they're all just still trying to wrestle with. And, and for me as a storyteller, like a lot of our projects is like, we don't give answers. Like I think the answers come from within as audience members. I, I, our, my goal for a storyteller is just to get all the points out there and have them, the audience, make their own decisions and you know, because by that point then it, it comes from themselves. It's not me telling them this is how you should feel, this is what Native Hawaiians are, this is what we should be doing in the future. These answers come from within um, and so I'm actually more influenced by all of you folks and trying to gather all that information. Um, should I show that piece? I don't know. It's kind of, it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's like, I think it's five minutes. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> but it was, you know, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so for us, the, you know, and then, and then so we work really closely with um, Nainoa Thompson and them in regards to Panji Vinci Society because um, it's, it's, we are related to each other. We're, we're, it's funny, one of, the, one of the conversations when we're all asking like, oh, how can we afford all of this? Um, to send the students out to to Tahiti, to, to send the students out to Aotearoa, to send them students out to 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 the other places in the Pacific, um, you know the the people, the money people start questioning that, like why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Like, but then they would never question when we go out to New York or when we send them out to DC, you know. So it's just, and at the same time too, in regards to our knowledge and and values and and how we treat the environment, we're way more related to our cousins in the Pacific than anywhere else in the world, so it was just looking at, so the, the piece that we just did was just for these students, just to see where they belong in this story, in this narrative, and where they would go into the future. Um, so that's, yeah. And that's actually a, a, a good segue because as we're thinking about the, the theme of our conference and thinking about our future, our way, I think one of the things that our, our panelists are really kind of highlighting is that in order for us to, to think about what direction we're going to go to, we need the work of academics, we need the work of activists, and we need the work of artists, right? And we need to have all of us kind of really thinking together and, and really kind of connecting and, and linking with each other to figure out where, where we're going to go, where are we going to take ethnic studies, where are we going to go, what shape will an oceanic ethnic studies, what will it look like? Where is it going to go? What are the different kinds of connections? And so with that, I want to thank Noi, Dean, and Ty. And as we're transitioning to the final round table, um, we can watch Ty's short segment. Great. Thank you.